It's time to accelerate. Hi, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Join me as I host conversations with the leading experts in sales, marketing, sales automation, sales process, leadership, management, training, coaching, any resource that I believe to help you accelerate the growth of your sales, your business, and most importantly, you. Hello, and welcome to Accelerate. This is another edition of Frontline Friday, my favorite day of the week, because I get an opportunity to talk to my my co-host, Bridget Gleason. Bridget, very special guest. Don't forget, very, very special, special guest. guest. Very special guest, Bridget Gleason. So, how are you today? I'm super. I'm doing great today. Nothing wow. to complain about. Nothing to complain about. Nothing to this complain the about? the last time. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. It's the last time I had something really that I was complaining about, that I was unhappy. No. I tend to wake up happy and go to sleep happy. Well, that's perfect. Wow. I know. I'm one of the lucky ones. So what's your secret for emptying your brain before you go to sleep? Gratitude. Oh. I was going to say alcohol. But yeah, gratitude works too. No, alcohol, I don't think is, is <laughs> I, I think that one's probably not as good. I think gratitude is, when you can remember at the end of the day, God, what a great life. You know, we all have things to be thankful for. Mm-hmm. And there are definitely people that have real, real challenges. I feel like I'm fortunate that, you know, I've got challenges, but I've, I've got so much to be thankful for. So that's what I try to remember. I try to remember it at night. I try to remember it in the morning, throughout the day, especially when I feel frustrated. Well, here's Take the one. Right. So here's Take a question minute. for you along, the, along those lines. Something uh-huh. that I actually I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday about this is how do you impart that to people who are at earlier stages of their career. Because, yeah, it's, it's clear. It's, it's, we learn as we get older how to, how to, you know, adjust to the ups and downs of life better than we do when we're younger. And to spend less time worrying about them and fretting about them and ruminating about what I could have done differently and so on. I mean, as, as you get older, it's easier to sort of say, well, eh, you know, <laughs> that stuff happens, right? And tomorrow's another day, and and it'll be as you say, wake up happy, and it'll be another day to another opportunity to succeed, as as one of my friends always says. Um, so how how do we help people who are, as I said, at the earlier stages of their career, come up with this 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 uh, mindset? We'll call because we're going to talk about mindset today, and the gratitude mindset, if you will. <laughs> You know, gosh, Andy, I, it is hard. I mean, experience, it's one of the, the benefits of having a few more years on the planet is like, I, I had a really frustrating morning here. I say that everything's great and it is, oh my God, I had such a frustrating morning. As you know, my team is in Tel Aviv Mm -hmm. and I am not, they are 10 hours ahead of me. And all kinds of stuff happens. And I get up around four and I've got phone calls and emails and text messages and Slack chats. And it's as if the sky is falling, okay, around my team. And I I felt really frustrated without getting into any of the details, but I felt really frustrated. And I took a minute and I reflected on... The fact that through my career, boy, oh boy, I've been a lot more frustrated than I was this morning. And I can't remember why any of those times I was so frustrated. And that this that I'm frustrated about, I'm not going to remember. So I just was able to say, okay, let me just deal with what it is because it's not going to stick. And I, I guess the only, when you talk about how do we, how do we impart that I think we try to model it. I think modeling it and then talking about it. I, I don't know. I don't know any other way is model it and share it, share and, and give, give people permission to not get all worked up. No, oh, well, I like that. That's a, another way of thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think sometimes the expectation is, you should be really mad. You should be frustrated. Hang on to this anger. Hang on to the frustration. Hang on to the bitterness. Hang on to the 
disappointment, like don't let go. And I think to give people permission to let go and say, eh, you don't really need to hang on to that. You let that one go. Yeah, well, it, doesn't, it still doesn't mean you're not going to go back and address the problem. It's just you're going to do it from a different perspective. Absolutely. It, right. It has nothing to do with addressing the problem or not. You address the problem and let it go. Don't hang on to the emotion around it. And that's hard. That's well, still hard for me. I can get worked up. You? I know. I know. Shocking. Shocking. I know. I know. Shocking. Well, but it's it's interesting lesson. You know, we look at this period in our country's history where you could say arguably one of the most emotional political seasons we've seen. And you know, one of the things that's that seems to be clear is that <laughs> those emotions haven't really dissipated much here <laughs> several months yeah. after after the election. Yeah. Well, and people don't want sometimes we uh, get uh, an adrenaline rush from big, strong emotions, from anger. I mean, there is, it changes our body chemistry. And there's an, you get adrenaline from it. And so I think there are people who are also addicted to, addicted to the negative emotion, just as much as you can be addicted to winning a big deal. You can be addicted to anger. You can be addicted to all of these. We, 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 our body chemistry changes. Mm-hmm. So we got to break the addiction. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up the idea of addiction because I was um, listening to a, and watching a, a video from that featured Simon Sinek, mm. and he's talking about he was talking about sort of four sort of core core issues that that uh, challenges that millennials have in the workplace, and but one of the ones he, he talked about was this you know dopamine driven addiction to to our screens mm. and not necessarily our screens as much as what we receive through them. Right. You know, every time we get a, an email, a text, we get a text email or something, or it's, a, yeah. Yeah. We get the shot of dopamine that, uh, you know, we become addicted to because it's, it's pleasurable. And then, you know, we start thinking about, <laughs> we start anticipating when we're going to get the next one. Right. And that starts becoming a distraction in our day. Um, so it's very, it's very interesting. I want and we're going to, about that is I have the opposite. <laughs> I get like, I wake up in the morning. It, it, mine isn't, Oh my God, I'm so excited. Who's pinging me on Slack. It's, Oh my God, really this early. I haven't had coffee. Mm-hmm. Really? Like I don't have a, a positive emotion. I have a, uh, let me shut my computer for 10 minutes. Well, I'm not a millennial though. I'm not a millennial just in case anybody was confused <laughs> about that. I was, huh? I know, I know. So, well, it sort of leads to a, a sort of related question a little bit, but, and I was just, I was just thinking about this, because again, I was having this conversation with someone recently, is, is I, I gave a workshop to a client not that long ago, and about 80 inside sales reps, and, you know, during the course of doing this workshop, and it was very interactive, but at the same time, I could see that people were sneaking peeks of their phone and so on throughout the, the session. And so I, at one point, I just stopped and I said, okay, well, raise your hand if you, and these are inside sales reps, raise your hands if okay. you keep your phone on your desk while you're making your calls. And 100% of the people raised their hands. Wow. And, yeah, I've asked this in more than one instance, multiple instances of companies, and it's pretty much largely the same, is here we are trying to to keep people focused on a task, which is really focused on, on the customer, and yet we keep these, what I call weapons of mass distraction, Um right in front of us the whole time. And so so I you know, I asked the question and I said, okay, well, who among you, so virtually all 100% raised your hand, who among you will actually look at your phone if it buzzes or notifies you of activity while you're on a call with a buyer? And again, it was virtually everybody. You know, to say, oh yeah, they'll pick it up and look at it and put it, set it down. And you think, okay, that's no big deal, right? Just a little 
harmless multitasking, except you know the science is absolutely conclusive that that we don't have an ability to multitask or rapidly switch between tasks. Um, and so it's like you were talking about this addiction, just how powerful it is. That you know, in a sales context, we're willing to take our focus off of off of or we feel compelled to take our focus off of the buyer because we're addicted to getting the rush of getting a text or seeing what the latest social update is or or whatever. Well, there's also and somebody wrote a book about this, responsiveness. Mm-hmm. Needing to be really responsive. And I've had people say, I've got to, I'm I'm monitoring um chat or text or whatever because I'm interacting with a customer. So I've I've heard that too, wanting to be really responsive, and we've got all the tools to be really responsive. Right, but there's sometimes. So if you're blocking out, if you're on the phone with with one buyer, you have to prioritize that. I mean, you can't. Well, that's true. You can't. That's you can't, you can't take your focus off of them because yeah, you, know, you might only have one opportunity to really capture their attention. We've talked about that before, right? You have to earn their more additional time in small increments. So last week we had spoken about that. And so, gosh, you know, if you take your mind off, off the ball, eye off the ball, mind off the ball, for even an instant, you know, there's, there's a researcher at the University of California in Irvine who did a study and found that, that it, it can take minutes, multiple minutes to sort of yeah. re-engage the level you were at before with just these little distractions. And so if, if you're trying, thinking, gosh, I'm trying to conduct an effective Q&A with the, the customer, do some discovery, really listen to the answers they're giving, you just can't do that if you're looking at multitasking. your Multitasking. And you're trying well, to multitask. Think about, it. think about it, though. Think about the other channels where people are now interacting, like chat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's all kinds of chat and how one person will be managing four or five different chats. Right. And they're having to switch context, switch context, switch context, switch context. We're also getting to this. I wonder how this is going to evolve for us, Andy. Is it going to persist and we're getting these little bits of information and that's all we're sort of getting and it's not deep engagement um, I know t- what we do is we try with the chats to move them to another medium of communication where, it's again, it's more personalized, where it right. can be a little bit longer. And sometimes we'll move from chat to text to email to a phone call to in person. Like it's these varying levels of engagement that we're able to get uh, from a customer uh, but I guess to the your to the point that we're speaking about, I just wonder how it's. I, I wonder how these different communication tools and the fact that even millennials are are used to doing this multitasking is as they're coming of age. Is this are the the dinosaurs? Okay, I present company excluded. I'll talk about myself only. Are we going to have to adapt to sort of this in, in, and incorporate it? Maybe not adapt, but incorporate this quick communication in these different channels as part of our sales process. It's not natural for me, but I, I feel being more and more led into it. Well, but the thing is, the scientists are showing that it's – we're just as humans, we're not capable of doing that efficiently and effectively. But, so but that doesn't mean we're so we, – yeah, but we may still do it and have it be ineffective and inefficient Yeah, and well, still do it. Well, that's true. That's, we, we go through life and count the things we do that, that fall into that category. Um, but, I mean, I, I was reading this article that, that – talking about uh, a scientist at Carnegie Mellon did – test with some subjects where they were see if I recount this correctly is is had three groups of people that uh, you know one was sort of interrupted um, 
taking a test, I think. They gave him a certain test. And one was, uh, the other group was interrupted, but then told once, but then told that another interruption was coming. And then the third group was never interrupted, but having told that, you know, an, an interruption was coming. And that first group that was interrupted, that based on, they went back and re-engaged and finished their, this test they were taking. The conclusion was, and it sounds a little harsh, but <laughs> basically it said that they scored substantially lower on this, this test than afterwards than before they'd been interrupted. And it was like, I think the conclusion was, they said, you know, the, the interruption made the, the test takers 20% dumber. So if you think about that in the context of, yeah, you said uh, you have a chat operator, a chat person that's, that's managing multiple conversations, is just based on what science has found already is we know at a given that each of those conversations is going to be suboptimal. So as you do, getting them to a more one-on-one conversation, you know, direct one-on-one. Where they not, can be focused, where everybody's not, focused. Where everybody's focused. This is a one-to-many. That, that really becomes an imperative. Well, because think about it. The... The person on the other end, so on the chat, I mean, given all the statistics as well, they are probably multitasking too. They're probably distracted too. They well, probably have their phone out. Well, for sure, because it's taking you know time between each of the reaction interactions with the, the chat operator. Well, and I just think I just think that that we're seeing more and more communication that is suboptimal. It's suboptimal, and I, I guess where. Well, and that's that. well. I, well, it sounds like I'm arguing the other side. I'm actually agreeing with you that even it, it's maybe because it's suboptimal on the other side, then we've got to focus even more on the task and the conversation and what that'll look like, so that we can bring the most to the conversation. That just because other people are multitasking and maybe their attention is spread thin doesn't mean that ours should be spread thin in our job. That's not going to, that's not going to help anything. It's just going to be suboptimal plus suboptimal, which is double suboptimal. Yeah. So I, th- I think in some ways it's, it's a call to, yes, the world is going this way. So differentiate. Yeah. It's interesting. There was, yeah. Well, the, a, a quote from, uh, it's found on a from a professor at Stanford, a sociologist named Clifford Nass, who it's, they said conducted some of the first tests on multitasking, and you know he said people can't resist trying to do two things at once. His quote is, "Are are suckers for irrelevancy?" Sort of. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's you think about. It. I mean, if you're a salesperson, you can't focus and you can't be present for the prospect you're talking to. You, know, you can't give them your full attention if you can't listen to the answers to the questions that you're giving them because you're distracted by, what's that, a tweet, an email, a text, a chat, whatever, then, yeah, you are perhaps on a path to irrelevancy because eventually the customers can find the information they need, whether it's from you or from somebody else. Well, and I think it's not just needing to be focused when you're talking to a prospect or a customer. It's, am I able to focus when I need to make 40 phone calls? Am I able to focus and tune out the chats and the emails and and the text messages and the noise around? Like, am I able to focus, or do I keep switching context? It's it's as all science points to. Every time you're switching context or getting interrupted, it you, slows it down, makes getting, it less efficient. You're getting dumber. <laughs> to use the words of the scientist, you're getting dumber. Dumber, God. And if anything, boy, Andy, I don't want to get dumber. I have a thing about that. If I could do anything, I would get just smarter. If I could just add, if I had a choice, I would just, that's the one thing. I, 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 don't you think you are? Just by sheer compilation of experience and having more more experiences. I know, but I, I guess I'm saying, for me, I like it that you say you're getting dumber. <laughs> Because that, to me, of anything, that like you just hit my hot button. Like, I don't want to be any dumber than I am. And I don't think I'm dumb, but I don't want to be dumber. I don't want to be dumber. If anything, I want to be smarter. So, 
the fact that multitasking is going to make me dumber, I've just, I've stopped dead in my tracks. That would stop me dead in my tracks. I love it. And, and I like it that it's not mincing any words. Not like, well, it's not that good for you. It's a little ineffective. No, you're making yourself dumber. dumber. <laughs> well, that is, Dumb I mean, I laugh because that is, right, that is the net effect. If you think about it, you know, if you're trying to engage in a conversation with a prospective buyer and you're just not tracking because you just took your eye off the ball to read an email that came in on your phone, even if it was just the headline in the first paragraph, let's say. Um, wow, right? That's a problem. That's when you're on the phone. What if? And then if you're in person with them, I mean, this is the other thing that that's you know we sort of alluded to, but is that you know, as, as sales reps, if you're in the field talking to a prospect, you're in a meeting talking to a protect a you know potential partner. Turn off your phone and put it away. Put it away. Take it off. Don't leave it on the desk. Because, you know, you leave it on the desk, as, and Cynic talks about this in the video that I referenced earlier. It's just like, you're just telling the prospect that they're just not that important to you. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's absolutely. basic, first of all, why put it out there? You know, if you're, if, think about it. If you're in sales, why are you putting the phone out on the table? Yeah, especially if you have an Apple Watch, then you don't have to put the phone on the table. You just have it on your wrist. <laughs> That's right. Then when it buzzes, you can look okay. at your watch. Right. But the point is, turn this thing off. I mean, one thing I've yeah. done with customers is, is I'll make a show of turning the phone off in order to get them to turn make theirs off. To get, yeah, them, to yeah. get them to turn theirs off. Good, and also to tell them that strategy. This, this, this is important. So you turn it off in front of them and put it, put it in a, you know, your back pocket, put it in a coat pocket, you know, briefcase, whatever you have with you, and, you know, just put it away. But, yeah, leaving it on the table, so on, just, yeah, not, not a that good idea. That sends a message. It sends a really, it sends a very strong message. Maybe something better is going to, yeah, I, I agree with you. I typically, I mean, I do have an Apple Watch, but. As um, do I. But. I, I oftentimes won't even have my cell, my cell phone will be in a bag, but if my watch pings me, I, I'm not looking, I'm not looking to see who texted or, or emailed. I, I, it's a pet peeve of mine. Also people ha being really distracted by other things. If you're going to ask me for time, I mean, here again, if you're going to ask me for time and you are, let's say the seller and I see you distracted and looking at your phone and, okay, now you've just told me how much you value my time. Not a lot. And I'm, 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 I'm not very into that. Yeah, no. So you've sent a strong message. You're, you're, not, you're not likely to get more of my time. You're not likely to get more. Yeah. And, you, and, and, there's, and you, just have to, you just have to make a good choice. And there's always a trade-off, right? And you sort of talked about it, right? You know, two seconds ago is is the choice is stay focused on the customer and let this thing go, this temporary thing that I won't even remember, right? Sort of like the worries you talked about before. I could be worried about something today, and then tomorrow I won't even remember what that was. So why did I spend so much time worrying? Well, it's the same thing with looking at your phone. You know, when you're in a meeting with a customer, or you're on a call with a customer. In a day, you're not going to remember you got that message, right? You're not going to remember that, you know, unless, <laughs> unless you know, somebody's pregnant at the hospital and you need to go or something, medical emergency, but you're not going to, you won't even remember. So, That's right. So it's not worth potentially alienating the prospect, um, making a less than a good impression by just checking whatever that random communication is. I'm also, I've never been good at multitasking. So this has not been a hard one for me. I'm never, I'm not, I can't very rarely will I talk on the phone, even with Bluetooth and all that while I'm driving. I really need oh. to be singularly focused. Yeah. I'm not good at multitasking. I don't like it. I want to be a hundred percent there. Well, I don't I, like it. Well, I can, yeah. I mean, I can have a, a good conversation with, you know, a prospect or a customer while I'm in the, the client, while I'm in the car. But when I finish driving, I can't remember it, right? Because I was focused on the conversation on driving, and you know it's like another part of your brain you use to take notes, right? 
And Good so point. It's like, yeah, I had one with a client not that long ago where he discussed a very great, great discussion, 20 minutes in the car as I was driving back from somewhere. And it was the only time they had available to talk. So normally I wouldn't schedule it when I was in the car. But you know, when I come back, it's like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hard time, yeah, what sum- was that hard time, again? Hard time summarizing. So I, I mean, basically, it's exactly what I told the client. I called her and said, uh, can we do yeah. that again? Can we just go through <laughs> the, highlights, the highlights again? And I felt, but I, I fell on my sword because, hey, it's what it was. But yeah, never again. So, all right, Bridget, we've reached the end of the road for today. But not the end of the road, period. No. Just for today. Just for today. Just for this Friday. So, as always, absolute pleasure to talk with you. And friends Likewise. are listening. Absolute pleasure to have you join us here today. Do please continue to send questions in. Um, we didn't have one this week. We did last week, which we based our conversation on. So be glad to take those. You can send those to Andy at zerotimeselling.com. And uh, gosh, I guess that's that's about all I know for today. So Bridget, that's all you need to know. All right, friends, thank you. Bridget, thank you. Talk to you later. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like what you heard and want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher.com. For more information about today's guests, visit my website at andypaul.com. 